Ok, we are ready to design our own characters. And to help with that, I want to introduce you to an awesome tool that you may have seen being used before, because it's very common when drawing characters. Depending on the artist, it can have different names, I call it the mannequin. And it's a bit of an analogous tool to the head prototype we saw in the head unit, because it has similar function. It is meant to help you with the process of designing and drawing a character by separating this process into two steps. One where you establish quickly and easily the main shapes and proportions and the position of the body. This will be the mannequin. And then on a second step, we use this mannequin as a guide to draw the final character with the details and the line art and everything on top. So how do you make a mannequin then? Well, that depends on the particular character, the pose, the style, and your preferred way of working. We are working with cartoons here. There really isn't a single mannequin that works for every character, because each cartoon can have drastically different bodies. However, most characters are gonna be heavily based on a version of the real-life body, so knowledge of anatomy do matters a bit. Now, I won't go into anatomy in this course for a couple of reasons. First, that's an advanced topic and I want to keep it beginner friendly. And second, you don't really need knowledge of anatomy to make most cartoon characters. However, I do believe some quick rundown through the most important shapes that makes up the body is gonna be heavily beneficial for any character of any body shape. So that's what we're gonna do now. So here's a diagram I made of the super simplified anatomical shapes of the body. This diagram represents the main shapes I think when I'm making a mannequin. I warn you that this is my personal way to abstract the anatomy of the body. I'm sure other artists will see the things in a slightly different way. But this works for me and I think it'll work for you. Now, not all cartoons are gonna have this exact same body. But this diagram represents the most complex mannequin you'll want to make. So if you learn how to draw this, if you commit to memory the different shapes that you see here, then it's not gonna be hard to play around with the proportions and positions, and even change a few shapes here and there to come up with your own mannequin that fits the character you want to draw. So now let's go through all of these shapes and clarify any doubts that may come up. Whenever I'm making a character, I like to start by making the torso. I believe that in a cartoon, it's the single most characteristic shape of a character. So for me, it makes sense to start there. This is the torso. And I like to think of the torso as being made of four distinct sections that you can play around and exaggerate to get to unique bodies. At the top is the trapezius section. This is a real life muscle and it has a unique relationship with the rest of the torso and the neck. In real life, the trapezius is a back muscle that extends to the base of the head, so all of this area that you're seeing here, it's kinda the back of the torso showing through the front. You can see this more clearly in the side view. This is important to know because it will define the way the torso looks in the upper section. It's not a straight line, it has this triangular shape that goes to the neck. It's bigger in males, and in females this muscle is there, but it's much smaller, making it barely visible. So have this muscle on mind when making the top of the torso. But what's more interesting is how it's related to the neck. I want you to notice that the neck is in front of the trapezius. Like I said earlier, the trapezius is part of the back showing through the front. That's the reason why the neck seems to penetrate a bit into the torso. You can see how this works better in side view. And because of that, the neck extends down the trapezius section length. When I'm making mannequins, I like to indicate the connection between the neck and the torso by closing the shape of the neck, like in this diagram. This way I can easily see if it's connected properly and the extent of the trapezius, which is gonna be important for some characters at the moment of placing the arms, as you'll see later. The next two areas of the torso are not gonna be nearly as complex. Going down the trapezius areas, we have the pectoralis area, where the pectoralis muscle is in real life. 
I like to separate this section because of two things. First, some cartoon bodies exaggerate this part of the torso to make super muscular male bodies. And second, this area is important because this is where the breasts come from in females. Notice how the breasts hang from the bottom of this area down. You can see this clearly inside view. From front view there is a trick to help you place the breast that I like to use. Just think of an inverted heart shape that connects with the sides of the neck. This trick also works pretty well in three quarters view as well. Of course, I don't need to mention that this area is considerably wider for average male bodies than for the average female body. This next area is basically the connection between the upper part of the torso and the lower part, which ends in the waist. In cartoons in the classic male body, this area has an inverted trapezoidal shape that connects with the pelvis. And in females, because of the classic hourglass torso, this is the narrowest section especially comparing it with the pelvic section. Finally, it's the pelvic section of the torso. This area has its own complexities, mainly because of the way it connects with the legs. First of all, I want you to notice how in the male and female torso, this shape has a bit of a unique form. To me, from the front, it kinda looks like an underwear shape, as if the mannequin were wearing underwear. This underwear shape is not arbitrary, the legs penetrate a bit into the torso in this angle, in real life, to allow the legs to move forwards in different directions. So drawing this shape is essential so the legs look correctly connected with the torso. A couple of things to notice. This angle at which the legs connect will change a bit depending on the character body type, but it will always connect before the upper end of the pelvic area, before the waist. So always make sure to leave a bit of a space here at the top. And second, this might not be visible from all angles, but there is a small gap between the legs. It does not end in a point. This is important because you may want to make characters with lots of space between the legs, so you want to keep this gap in mind. And that was the torso. But now it's time to talk about the other limbs. We already talked about the neck, and of course we saw the head in length in the previous unit, so let's skip to the arms. It's very important to know that in real life the arms hang at the side of the torso. They have their own width. And so it's easier to think and separate between the torso and the arms. A nice trick is to add the thickness with another shape. In this case I use a half circle. This half circle also has the function of defining the width of the arms and the location. Notice how the arm starts aligning with the upper torso, and the other thing to keep in mind is that the trapezius ends at the width of the torso, it does not go above the arm. Remember that, it's very important. From here I found that the easiest way to simplify the arms is to make the upper and lower arm as two triangular shapes. Of course, in real life the shape of the arm and the musculature is much more complex than that, a roughly triangular shape like this looks pretty good for all the limbs. So the upper arm is basically a rounded triangle that starts at the size of the half circle. And the lower arm? Well, it's a bit of a more complex shape. Think of it as a teardrop shape. This is a fairly accurate shape to the real life form of the lower arm. And it's extremely important to get it right for any character that shows some musculature. A couple of things to notice. The shape must start before the end of the upper arm. This is the way the two arms connect in real life. Also notice how the outside side starts a bit above the inner side. The outside is always going to be a simpler curve. It's just a C shape. The inner side has a more complex S curve. This teardrop shape also repeats from side view and from all views. The muscles wrap around the bones in a very particular way, making the lower arm have this shape from pretty much all views. You'll notice that in both mannequins I made, the hands are two rectangles. I also made the feet as super simple triangles. Hands and feet are very well known to be fairly complicated to draw. The truth is that even in cartoons the shape requires some extra study. So what I decided to do 
is to make a single lesson dedicated to the hands and feet. For now, I recommend you to leave them both for the finishing stage and make all mannequins with rectangle hands and triangle feet. We already saw how the legs connect with the torso and the importance of the underwear shape on the lower section to help you connect the legs. Now let's look at the legs themselves. I want you to notice how the legs mirror what happens in the arms. The upper leg has a roughly rounded triangular shape, just like the upper arm, and the lower leg has this characteristic teardrop shape that we already saw in the lower arm. But going a bit more in detail, the upper leg starts at the points defined by the underwear shape, as we talked earlier, and ends in a point. This point is where the kneecap is. Notice the difference between the male and female upper leg. The male leg tends to be more muscular and therefore a bit thinner and spread apart. Female legs are wider because they have a bit more fat, but mostly because the hips will most likely be much wider, so they start being wider. The legs are a part of the body where the side view really matters. Notice in both male and female, the upper leg still has this roughly rounded triangular shape, but now the back side is much flatter. So there is this roughly flat side on the back and a roughly rounded side on the front. Like I said a minute ago, the lower leg has a similar shape to the lower arm from the front. It starts just above the end of the upper leg. If you remember, that was where the kneecap was gonna be. And it follows this teardrop shape till it gets to the foot. What is different from the lower arm is in the side view, where the theme of one side flat and one side rounded repeats, but now opposite to the upper leg. From side view, the lower leg is wider at the top and thinner at the bottom, so the apex of the curvature is going to be on the first half. Notice how the lower leg starts just a bit behind the upper leg. This is how the legs are in real life, and it's meant to help balance out the body. And of course, if you remember from a minute ago, I said that the hands and feet, we were gonna be seeing it in a future lesson. For now, I like to make the feet as triangles during the mannequin phase. And that was it for the mannequin. Like I said in the beginning, these diagrams represent the single most complex and realistic style mannequin you will want to make. If you master it, you should have everything you need to make any type of character with any type of body. So now let me give you a quick demonstration of how you will use these shapes to design your own characters. What I'm gonna do is to apply each of these shapes to completely different proportions than what's on the diagram. I'm gonna play with the different shapes, squashing and stretching them, making them bigger or smaller, and for as long as I respect somehow the relationship and placement of the different shapes, the mannequin is gonna look like a correct cartoon human. I might merge or alter one shape or another. For example, you notice that I don't like to mark the separation between the trapezius area and the pectoralis area. And that's okay because even if I don't draw it, I'm thinking about it. I'm making sure the neck won't overextend past the trapezius area and giving the torso the classic triangular shape that the trapezius area gives it. That's what you do when you understand and get familiar with the shapes. The thing is that the diagram represents a roadmap to the basics of the human body, so you understand better how the body works. It's a tool. Once you understand how to use it, you don't have to follow it to the letter. I do, however, recommend you that for now, you do follow it pretty closely, just as a safety measure to, to eliminate one more variable. And here they are. Different mannequins of different body types, all made using the shapes of the diagram. Now it's your turn. Make tons and tons of these designs, but very important, draw them in this front view. Don't worry about putting them in dynamic poses quite yet, we're gonna do that in the next lesson. For now focus on using the shapes to design cool characters and attempt to memorize the shapes of the diagram so you don't have to rely on it every time you want to draw a character.